developing their own interests and loves and talents. So, and even what a nice opportunity to communicate with our children. Say, you know, I've been so busy and just concentrating on earning money and raising the house and keeping the house clean. You know, I never before thought that I, you know, about what my dream might be and my purpose in life. I really want you to pursue that. So I'm going to do it with you, you know, and then making sure we spend that time to do the journaling and have the white space in our own life and the chance to you know, to read things and see things and talk with people. Exactly. And using and finding what what I used to like to do is set up a family time with my children where we could talk about these things. And we ha- we called it Let's Talk About It. And we would just sit down and we had our Let's Talk About It time. And it was very, very, it was a time when everyone knew it was safe to talk about whatever it was it is that they were working on. But we could talk about our interests. And my children became some of my best supporters. They they helped me really to develop my commitment to um, homeschooling, to start Laurel Springs School, to continue dancing, to continue in my dancing lessons, to to um, to lecture, to help write books. They became my support team, and I became their support team. And we understood that we were there to help each other. And so that we, what happened was is we never developed a, pol- a polarized relationship. We had a relationship that was built on trust or is built on trust and supporting each other's goals. And growing together. And exactly. And that we don't have to know everything. You know, you talk about... Um, goals. I know for myself, I have a list of, I call it my before I die goals. Yes. You know, I do. I have like a hundred things on there. Okay, I want to see this. I want to write this. I want to do this. I want to learn this. And then I just make sure that every year I'm working or all the time I'm working on something from that list. And several years ago, my big goal was to run a marathon. And I started, <sighs> yeah, it was really, it was a huge confidence builder. I can't tell you. In fact, it was because of that marathon that I had the confidence to start homeschool.com. And I, I remember I started in January, and I started with one mile on the weekend. And the next week, and I would add another mile, so I was up to two. And I remember when I was running three, I thought, oh, my gosh, I never thought I could run three. And, of course, with the marathon, it's you know over 26 miles. And it was a wow. couple months off from the marathon, and I was behind schedule. And, I, you know, you get into fear. I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do it. And I was supposed to do a 17-mile run that day, and I felt defeated. I told the kids, I go, no, I just can't do it. And then it wasn't just my children, but their, the neighborhood friends, too, said, no, you can do it. We'll help you. And so they came out with me, and they took shifts, either running with me or riding the bike with me and carrying my energy <laughs> bars and giving me water. And it was such a terrific experience for everyone. Oh, that's such an amazing example. That's such a great example. And that, that, is, that's such, that is following your life purpose. And I, it happened a couple of years ago, too. Time Warner had come and said, would you write this homeschooling book for us? And I thought, oh, I don't have my knee-jerk reaction. I don't have time for this. You know, unfortunately, my best friend says, are you kidding? That's one of your before I die goals. Mm-hmm. You know, of course you're going to make the time for this. But I had this fear that I would become a bad mother or, you know, our family life would suffer if I wrote this book. I, we had, it was 16 weeks to write uh, 12 chapters. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being totally fabulous because I, at, I would write one chapter a week, and at the end of that week, I would celebrate with the kids. Mm. Yeah, so the goal was if I have it all done by Friday, like we would go to Monterey, you know, the whole group of kids. So they'd be coming saying, no, no, get up there. How you doing? Are you going to be done in time? Are we going to Monterey on Saturday? Or are we going out to dinner? So they really became um, a part of the goal. And now, of course, they all want to write books. And it's and that's such a great example of modeling. And And I think it's so true that our children want us to be successful. They want to support our success. It's very reassuring for a child to see their parent growing and expanding. And that's such a beautiful example of how our family is our support team. So and we're we so afraid, though, that pursuing our dream, though, means that we're being selfish. Oh, yes. No. I, you know, I just keep thinking when, 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 when it comes time to leave this earth, I want to make sure that I feel that I've done my very best. And I always tell that to my children. You know, I want you to feel that you've been able to make the contribution that you were brought here to make because it's so important to have that sense of fulfillment. Why, why don't we open up the call, Marilyn, and just kind of chat back and forth. And before we close today, though, I would love to hear, um, not, not gossipy, but I would love to hear some of your famous students and, of course, who are succeeding, and if you've noticed any patterns that they have that we can learn from. In fact, why don't we talk about that first before we open up the call, if you don't mind? Oh, I'd be happy to. Um, 
Let's see. We we do have a lot of students who work with us who are very, very talented. And I remember you mentioning that the um, young actor who played Frodo in Lord of the Rings, that not only was he an excellent uh, actor, but a really well-rounded, nice guy. Yes, he is. I, he's, he has to be, he is truly one of the loveliest, most beautiful people I've ever met, and it was truly an honor and gift to work with him, not because he was an actor, but because he had one of the most beautiful hearts that I have ever experienced in my life. And, um, and that comes through in his acting. One of the things that I was, would say is like we work with, um, we have two of the young girls who won gold at the, um, figure, national figure skating championships. And what I've noticed about these children is one, they're very self-directed. Um, they're not doing this because they're being forced to do it. They're doing it because it's their dream. They're incredibly disciplined. Um, amazing. I mean, the amount of hours and ta- energy they spend practicing and working. And they have a sense of themselves as a role model for other children. I've been really impressed with um, Tannis Belbin. She's our national ice dancing champion. And she has such a, she has had such a strong sense of her importance as a role model to children and the contribution she needs to make and how very well, well focused she is on not only um, her ice skating, but on the importance of learning. And and I've seen that with a lot of the um, elite sports athletes, is they have a tremendous um, sense of their own um, their own self-purpose, and then we're here to support that and make sure that they can do what they're here to do. Um, we have a number of gymnasts who are in the same category, and it's just incredible. No one can do the kind of heavy um heavy lifting and heavy practice they did unless they were absolutely personally dedicated a parent couldn't force a child to to do that so the children you know have a dream and the parents support them do you notice um do the children do they break it down into goals do they use goal setting they do i mean an elite a child who's involved in in becoming an elite athlete or an actor um, is usually usually fairly very very organized. They know exactly what they want to accomplish, and they know how they're going to what they need to do to get there. And do they use visualization techniques? You, I know that they have a tremendous sense of self confidence, and that they are really really clear that this is what they want to be doing, and that at any point in time, if they don't if they don't enjoy doing it. The ones that have done the best have had parents who have let them know that if they don't enjoy it, they no longer have to do it. And yes, they do use self visual. They use visualization. They use power of appreciation, and they have for themselves and for others. For themselves and for others, and they have a tremendous sense of ethics, which is that they are here to make a contribution, and that they want to do their very, very best. Which, of course, takes the pressure off, too. I remember when I had my first radio interview years ago, um, it was my friend who was the um, the talent for the show, and I was really nervous, and she said, you know, Beck, it's not about you. It's about the listeners. How can you help them? How can you convey information to them? And, it, boy, it just set me free, and I, I remind myself of that all the time, and even my children. You remember, it's not really about you, whether you're good or bad. It's, you know, it's you using your gifts to kind of connect with and help other people. I think that that's so well said. I mean, there's something about giving a gift to another person, and and they, and they can be big gifts or little gifts depending on wh- what you're working on. But they really like light up your life and make a huge difference. I remember when um, Tanith Belbin was dancing, um, was skating for the competition. She wrote us and told us that she was going to skate for us. And I'm sure that um, she was skating for lots of people, but it was a tremendous gift to know that this child felt a sense of appreciation and a, an ability to give in such a big way. Now, I know at Laurel Springs School, you know, one of your strengths, I thought, is uh, the personal approach you use. I, I guess we should tell our, our callers a little bit about Laurel Springs. You were the first online curriculum. You're an umbrella school. So people anywhere in the United States or around the world can sign up with Laurel Springs and do their K-12 through homeschooling with you. And I know that you have... For example, your learning styles inventory is um, uh, used by uh, Mariama Willis, who we interviewed earlier this week. I think her learning styles inventory is the, the best in the country. And I not only do they take the, the inventory, which identifies their uh, whether they're auditory or um, visual, but also what 